So now let's talk about the ways you can track your cost in the cloud. The first way is to use the billing dashboard, which will show you all the costs associated for the month, the forecast, and the month to date. This is a very high level tool, but it will be helpful to just get an overview of what's happening. And on the same page, you will also get access to the AWS free tier dashboard, which will show you the usage for each free tier based on what you've been doing so far for the month. So I can access my billing dashboard by clicking on my account and clicking on my billing dashboard, or you can go to find services and just type billing to also access your billing dashboard. So the billing dashboard, as I said, is pretty high level. It will show you the cost for the month. So for this month, I've spent $14.60. This is on my course. Why? Because I paid for my domain name for $12. I paid for config. I said config was not free. I paid for KMS because I created a KMS key. And again, that was not free. And then finally, I have some taxes associated with my accounts. So this is how much I spent to, to date. And it gives me a high level overview of what's going on for my account. If I scroll down, I can see the top free tier usage by service. So again, part of my dashboard. And if I want more information, I can click on view all. And this will give me my free tier service uh, usage. And I can see, for example, that for Amazon S3, I have this many requests. And here's my forecasted usage. And so I will see that it will be over the free tier. So maybe I want to disable what is doing requests, which I expect it to be the server access logging, for example. And for Amazon S3, for the request as well here on the get request, I'm good to go. I'm still under the free tier and my forecast is also good as well. For EC2, I can see that I've used 18 hours of T2 micro so far. My forecasted user is 177 hours and I have overall in the month 750 hours of T2 micro and that is for going to be free. So this free tier service usage dashboard is really helpful to see how you're tracking on your costs for this course. And obviously if something looks wrong, for example, for Amazon S3, feel free to delete all the buckets and you should be good to go and it will be a lot safer. Okay, so next we want to explore our bill a bit deeper. So for this, we're going to use cost allocation tags. They will allow us to track our cost on a detailed level and group them together. For example, I have defined a cost allocation tag and then you export your report and then you would get the cost by category in an Excel format. So for this, you can use different tags. You can use the AWS generated tags, for example, they will be automatically applied to the resource that you create and they will start with the AWS prefix, for example, AWS created by, and you can also define your own user tags that will be defined by the user that will start with the prefix user colon. And this will be helpful, for example, to tag your resources and then have them grouped by cost center, by tag, by owner, by stack, by application, and so on. You can use tagging as well to create groups. So tags are used for organizing resources. For example, your EC2 instances, your images, your load balancers, your security groups, your RDS databases, your VPC resources, Route 53, your IAM users, etc., etc. And if we create resources through CloudFormation, they will all be tagged the same way if you remember it from the CloudFormation hands-on. There's free naming for your tag. You can do whatever you want, but common tag names are going to be name, environment, team, cost center, and so on. And these tags can be used for cost reasons, obviously, but also to create resource groups, to create, maintain, a view, a collection of resources that will share the common tags. And you can edit those using the tag editor. So to show you what that would be, in resource groups, you would be able to create a group or to edit the tags with a tag editor and tag your different resources based on how you want to define them. So for example, for the tag editor in here, I can look at resource tabs of, for example, security groups for EC2, and I will search my resources. I will find all the security groups, and I can, for example, manage the tag of the selected resources and say that, yes, I'm going to add a tag of department and then say IT. Review and apply the tag changes, and it will apply the tag to all these resources. And then I can create resource groups and I say, okay, it's going to be tag based. I can select the resource type or should do all resource types. So this is great. And I will say, for example, that I want my department to be IT, add it. And here I will have to see that if I preview my resource groups, I can find the five security groups that I've tagged from before. Then we can call it IT resources and then create on create group. And we don't need a space. So I'm going to have IT underscore or no IT dash resources. Here we go. And I have created my first resource group based on this tag. And this is very helpful to see what belongs to different departments. 
and you can use these tags for cost purposes. So on the left hand side, I can click on cost allocation tags and then we can see all these tags right here, activate them and then generate a report based on these tags. So now let's talk about the reports we can generate in AWS. We can generate a cost and usage report to dive deeper into your cost and usage and they will give you an information and it's going to be the most comprehensive set of cost and usage data available on AWS. It will include all the additional metadata about services, the pricing and the reservations. So you can get some information, for example, around your Amazon EC2 reserved instances usage. This cost report will give you all the AWS usage for each service category used by an account and its IAM users in hourly or daily line items, as well as any tags that you have activated for cost allocation purposes. And this report can be integrated and analyzed using Athena, Redshift, or QuickSight, which is a dashboarding tool. So this report looks like this. It is going to be the most granular report you can get with the most comprehensive data, and it will describe everything for every cost, when it was incurred, why it was incurred and the description of the associated cost. So this is definitely a report you may want to use to analyze your bill in details and really understand where a charge is coming from. Next, we have Cost Explorer, which is a more visual tool in which we visualize, understand and manage your cost and usage over time. You can create custom reports that will analyze the cost and usage data, but it is for a high level. OK, you can get your total cost and usage data across all accounts or monthly or hourly or at the resource level. And with this cost explorer tool, you will be able to access your optimal savings plan to lower the prices on your bill. And most importantly, you can forecast usage up to 12 months based on the previous usage, which is an exam question. So if you're looking for a tool that will allow you to forecast your bill for 12 months ahead, then it's going to be cost explorer. So here is an example with cost explorer, you can get the monthly cost by AWS service. And as you can see here, you will get these graphs based on each different month and it will give you in this example for EC2 instances, which one are costing you money as well as the types. You can get hourly and resource level information. So this is your cost every hour with again, the cost defined by EC2 instance. So you can understand which EC2 instance is costing you more every single hour. And we can define savings plan, which is again, an alternative to using reserved instances and so you would get recommendations on savings plans right away directly from Cost Explorer. Finally, as I said, you can forecast usage on Cost Explorer. So for example, you can have a look at your previous cost and then you can go up to 12 months ahead of time to forecast your usage and see how much it's going to cost you to use AWS in the future based on the growth you have been experiencing in the past. So you will find the cost and usage report on the console on the left hand side to just enable the report and then create the report. So you need to enable those if you wanted to have it and it will take about 24 hours to populate them and you can create a report. I'll call it demo report that will include everything, including maybe resource IDs. Click on next and then I could deliver it to an S3 bucket. So I would select a bucket I have, for example, my demo um, CCP CloudFront, who knows? And then I'll click on next. I will say yes, I will allow the billing report to write to my S3 bucket. Click on save. And then I will say, okay, this is a valid bucket and it works. I want to get hourly data. I want to create a new report version. And maybe you want to enable report data integration. I'll click on next and then click on review and complete. And this will deliver to me my billing reports, my cost and usage reports directly into this Amazon S3 bucket. So this is one example. And then the second one is going to be around Cost Explorer, which is a more visual view to view, a visual way to view your bill. So this is going to give me some usage data in my account. Obviously, I don't have many costs in here, so it's not going to be fascinating. But what you can do again with Cost Explorer is to get recommendations on saving plans on the left hand side. So if you want to save some more. So these are the recommendations. And then you can also forecast the month and cost directly based on previous month usage all the way up to 12 months ahead. So to summarize this lecture, we are tracking the cost in the cloud using different tools, the billing dashboard for a high level overview. And we have also the free tier dashboard there, the cost allocation tags to group together our resources and make sure that we can track the tags according to a special category. The cost and usage report is going to give us the most detailed view we have about our bill in a CSV format. And we can analyze that report using Athena, QuickSight and Redshift. 
and finally the cost explorer which is going to give us a dashboard to get some information around our cost in nice graphs it's going to give us savings plans recommendations to save some costs in the future and it can also forecast our cost for the next 12 months based on our previous usage so that's it for this lecture i hope you liked it and i will see you in the next lecture